The Panasonic GH6 is a problematic powerhouse. Yeah, I said it, the GH6 is a PP. Sorry, sorry about that. Now you might be saying to yourself, what the hell is this Sony shooting sack of shit saying about my panty fanny? We'll get into all the good details, but first of all, watch your dang mouth because my mom watches my vids sometimes. And one thing Jennifer knows is that I'm not just some random Sony simp on YouTube. In fact, I built my personal freelance business on the backbone of the Panasonic GH4 and then eventually upgraded to the GH5, which I used for many years. Sadly, we parted ways a couple years ago, but it was a mutual decision to try other options. Either way, we're here together now and I present to you my honest, honest. and open-hearted review of the Panasonic GH6. I'm not here to read you the B&H spec sheet of this camera. I'm more of a fingers on type of guy, but these are the most notable new features the GH6 offers. 5.7K footage up to 30 frames per second. 4K 120 frames per second 10-bit internal footage. HD all the way up to 300 frames per second. Open gate 4x3 anamorphic recording at 5.8K up to 30 frames per second or 4.4K up to 60 frames per second, and it's all recorded internally, dude. Internal Apple ProRes recording, but only to a CF Express Type B card, which reminds me of my high school band Type A Alert. Do not look that up on Bandcamp. Seriously, I swear to God, I'll, I'll kick your ass if, if you find that link. And the best IBIS in the mirrorless game. It makes my Sony a7S III look like a drunk tumbleweed. And autofocus with triple the speed of previous Lumix cameras. Wait, oh yeah, I'm, get, yeah, I'm getting a message. Yeah, it's still pretty much dumb dog shit, but we're gonna get into this feature in the next chapter of the video. Yeah, go get out of here. You're in timeout right now. We'll come back to you. So yeah, on paper, the GH6 gives you the power of the sun in the palm of your hand. And honestly, it felt really damn good to have in my hands. Ooh, it feels chunky. Okay, Panasonic, all right, we can do, we can deal with this. It was nice to revisit the Lumix line of cameras, but this time with a fresh set of eyes since I haven't owned a GH camera in a few years. The high-end assist features, the cozy ergonomics, unlimited record time, analog limiter, and the best flip screen design on a mirrorless camera are all bonuses for anyone who partakes in Lumix love. But as our friend Otto Octavius learned in Spider-Man 2, sometimes this much power when mishandled turns into a problem. As nice as the footage can look from this camera, it comes with a host of frustrations. And let's start with the most obvious, autofocus. Please don't annihilate me in the comments. This is just my opinion. For the love of God, let's just have a good time together. I'm gonna give you the cold hard truth. Is the autofocus in the GH6 slightly better than previous Lumix cameras? Maybe, sure. But is it actually good? Objectively, nah fam. And I do not wanna see comments down here that say, just shoot manual or you don't need it on a pro level. Even though I've probably said stuff like that in my previous GH5 videos. But anyway, you and me are on the same team here. We're the customers and we both know that the GH6 has enough freaking horsepower to pump out some good ass autofocus. Panasonic just refuses to do it and it's really starting to frustrate. Me. Panasonic, if you're watching, do you know how many more freaking cameras you would sell if you just had autofocus that performed? It would be Canon, Sony, Panasonic. Because they already have all the great features in their cameras, the freaking assist tools out the wazoo that the Sonys and Canons don't even have. So imagine if they had good freaking autofocus. And for those of you out there on a pro level not needing autofocus, are you hiring a full-time AC to pull focus for you, but still shooting on a micro four thirds Lumix camera? Seems fishy, bruh. Who are you and why do you hate autofocus? And why wouldn't you want it as a tool just in case? It's an amazing feature to have in a pinch, especially if you're working on a small crew or a one man band. Who knows, maybe I'd still be shooting on Panasonic if it wasn't for the stupid autofocus. Dynamic range boost. Now, I appreciate the fact that the panty engineers are doing everything they can to squeeze out the maximum dynamic range from the micro four thirds sensor, but honestly, it just doesn't do it for me anymore. The most frustrating part of shooting with this camera is trying to freaking read the ink on my hands while I'm shooting that reminds me which frame rates and resolutions allow me to shoot with DR boost and which frame rates and resolutions don't allow me to shoot with DR boost. 
it's a pain in my ass. This probably sounds so pretentious, but just make it so that the camera has the best dynamic range it can possibly put out at all times with whatever limitations the sensor and the processor use together. You know, I, I know nothing about camera science stuff, but I don't wanna have to memorize when I can have creamy, silky looking dynamic range and when my clouds are gonna be clipped into oblivion and gonna look like a shitty video game that can't render the freaking open world distance. Even if I have to have lower frame rates, I don't have to shoot in 4K 120. I don't need 5.8K for, for most stuff. Most of us probably don't need that kind of stuff from a small mirrorless camera. So I'd be okay if they kind of tuned down those crazy higher end features, the fancy bits, and just made it so this camera packed a nice dynamic range punch all the time. I know I'm complaining a lot, but this is what this chapter of the video is for. And honestly, if anything, I wish that I could just swap DR boost, throw it out of here, and just get a dual native sensor, similar to the Panasonic GH5S. For $2,200 just for the body, I would absolutely not buy this camera. And this is coming from someone who started to get serious about filmmaking with the GH4. Someone who flew to Cine Gear 2017 just to see the EVA 1 get announced. The EVA 1. Someone who stayed up and waited for the BNH pre-order to go live for the GH5 and I bought it and went around the entire United States using the GH5 to document my dumbass life in a metal band. I'm not just a Lumix hater, I'm just giving you my honest opinions and honestly, it hurts me because I've had such a great experience with Lumix cameras in my life and they've been a huge part of me developing my skills with a camera. I wish Panasonic would have fully committed to taking a big risk to make the GH6 something really special to stand out in the mirrorless camera market. I wish they would have put an EF mount and an APS sensor on the camera to rival Fuji and Blackmagic. I wish it had great autofocus like Sony and Canon for indie shooters like me that can't afford to have a crew to make short films, projects, YouTube videos, client work, those kinds of things. The truth for me is that there are other cameras out there with a simpler user interface and a simply better image for less money. <laughs> <coughs> These ones. Those. Bottom line, the Panasonic GH6 is an absolute powerhouse of a camera that somehow still feels incomplete.